Dubai, the COVID trajectory in India could be on a downward slide. The nation's tally has risen by around 49,000 to about 80.9 lakh. That's the number in the last 24 hours. But active cases continue to decline and they have been declining now for the 27th day in a row, slipping below the 6 lakh mark. Over 10.77 crore people have already been tested. Around 11 lakh 64,000 people have been tested in the last 24 hours. So what explains this downward slide? Earlier this week, renowned epidemiologist Dr. Jay Prakash Mulyal in an exclusive interview with me said that signs of herd immunity was perhaps the only plausible explanation behind the fall in active COVID cases. On the other hand, A. Velumani, the founder and MD of Thyrocare has alleged that authorities in certain districts in certain states were trying to control the testing process in order to show a better scorecard. Meanwhile, the latest ICMR study has highlighted that the BCG vaccine, primarily used to protect against tuberculosis, can enhance both adaptive immunity in elderly people. The study, however, is yet to be peer-reviewed. Well, to get a sense of what is happening on the ground, joining me on the program, Dr. Sandeep Devan, the director and HOD of Critical Care at Fortis Memorial, also with us are Dr. Sandeep Budhiraja, the Group Medical Director of Max Healthcare. And joining us is Dr. Satinarayanan Mysore, Head of Department and Pulmonology Consultant at Manipal Hospitals. Doctors, thanks very much for joining us here. On the point of testing, uh, let me bring in Dr. Mysore into the conversation as well. Dr. Mysore, this is a point that was made by A. Velumani here on the program, uh, the uh, founder of Thyrocare, suggesting that in some states there is a hesitation to test and there is also a hesitation to report even if tests have been done so the uh, data may not be going back to the ICMR. Now this is a claim that he has made but even if you look at what the uh, test numbers look like there are some states or some regions where the test is disproportionately higher than others. Delhi for instance significantly higher uh, than other cities or other states. Uh, yes there is a significant portion of antigen tests that are being deployed but also RT-PCR but the number absolute number is significant higher. So how do you attribute or what do you attribute this uh, uh, decline in active cases to and what are you seeing on the ground? The unwritten rule of any pandemic till date over the centuries is uh, as the cases search to a peak, the number of uh, cases, newer cases or incidents will come down. Mechanism, is it herd immunity? It could be. Even the neutralizing antibodies have not been shown to, you know, absolutely shown to confer immunity. Is it the other way around? Is there an innate risk, a response that develops? Nobody knows. Not yet proven. Hmm. Testing on the, on the matter of testing, I was part of deliberations of the Karnataka uh, government uh, through the vice chancellor's office. I think for a country of... Yeah. This, uh, population, like uh, Dr. Divan mentioned, I think targeted testing should be the way to go. There is absolutely doesn't make mm. sense spending resources on testing the 130 crore population. So you need to identify right. population risk, prioritize people who need to get tested mm. and test. Otherwise, there are mm. um, you know, uh, chances that uh, inappropriate use of resources in the testing quarter. South Korea has probably spent okay. more than any other country on this earth, on uh, testing alone. Of course, their ro rates mm. are low, but uh, even a resource-rich yeah. country like the U.S. has not been able to, you know, test uh, at will or at random. Sure. Sure. Uh, even though in India we can uh, do on-demand testing, that of course has been allowed by most state governments as well. But uh, as Dr. Mysore is pointing out, targeted testing uh, will perhaps be uh, the appropriate response from here on. Outside of Delhi, ample capacity both in the general COVID wards as well as the ICUs. So that's good news that's uh, coming in from Dr. Sandeep Devan of Fortis. But uh, Dr. Mysore, uh, if I could ask you now to explain to us what you make of the trials that the WHO WHO has done uh, on the efficacy of the use of remdesivir, uh, the ICMR saying that plasma doesn't necessarily work, it's not particularly beneficial. Now, on the ground, you are the doctors who are treating patients. What do you make of what the trials are suggesting? What is working currently with patients? Correct. Uh, so, from uh, our standpoint, uh, 
um, I am in the process of looking at uh, more than 2,000 patients treated at, uh, here at Manipal and looking impassionately and uh, statistically at the data, comparing it with uh, pre-remdesivir days, that is before 24th of July, uh, to after uh, 24th of hmm. July, when the remdesivir era started. Offhand, I can tell you that uh, mortality substantially improved after introduction of uh, remdesivir. However, this is not a double-blind placebo-controlled trial. It would be a retrospective hmm. audit. Hmm. Done in two different time zones hmm. before the drug came to Bangalore and uh, you know after the drug has been used in okay. our house. Now coming to focusing on hmm. the uh, WHO trial, WHO as we all know uh, has backtracked on six occasions earlier. Now with the solidarity hmm. trial and uh, the uh, interim results of the remdesivir, we find uh, there are a number of points that can be debated. There is uh, one control group okay. which was applied to four or five uh, treatment arms. Therefore, there is a partial overlap of control subjects. The interim report does not talk about diagnostic confirmation of the infection in the first place. Um, then. Uh, the, what we found in our experience, timing has to be exquisitely fine, whether it is remdesivir or tocilizumab, yeah. whatever you use, if you hmm. do not use it at the right time, it is not going to succeed. Hmm. However, in the interim results, hmm. we don't find that they have declared the timing. Baseline physiological activity or severity okay. score is not uh, you know, found anywhere in that paper. So supportive care is also not defined. Here the clear winner is a placebo and in most occasions placebo does you know, win hands down if the trial is not designed. Right. And there is no, it's not a peer-reviewed paper yet. Therefore, I would not uh, yes. the WHO thing uh, unless until there is a peer review process to that. Let us look at the FDA. Okay. Okay. FDA clearly states remdesivir is to be used and they have put out the criteria when to use yes. or not. So that is where we stand. Okay. Uh, so you're saying that right. So you're, you're, you believe that there are questions uh, uh, with the WHO solidarity trial and, of course, uh, in your assessment, which is not a double-blind trial, but uh, the data that you've been able to assess uh, since the 24th of July, that's pre-remdesivir to now, which is post-remdesivir, in your experience, with all the caveats attached, you believe that it has brought down mortality rates. But as you rightly pointed out, it also depends on the timing of the administration of the drugs in the patients that have come to you. But Dr. Dr. Mysore, let me ask you again if you share that view there that we just heard from Dr. Divan. Uh, and also, you know, now this, uh, there, are, there are reports coming in on antibodies and how long the antibodies uh, uh, last, whether it's four or five months. Uh, what is your experience at this point in time, sir? Thank you. I do agree with uh, Dr. Divan uh, largely. Uh, Manipal being a referral hospital, we do the post-COVID patients coming back with uh, lots and lots of uh, issues uh, rather than complications. Complications are, you know, lung fibrosis, but uh, I think uh, Dr. Kivan was uh, quite right. Structural changes do not translate into functional disability. Just because this CT is abnormal, it does not make someone, you know, breathe inefficiently or have low saturation. That apart, you know, mm. one in uh, 300, 400 patients may have a transient uh, decreased pumping in the heart, uh, which actually improves on its own. Mm -hmm. And you catch one or two of the 300, and uh, minimal okay. intervention okay. is required. Then we also find uh, people do require general rehabilitation and uh, physiotherapy and also pulmonary rehabilitation. Uh, there are issues related to okay. overuse of steroids and uh, people may require little medical help and intervention. The neurological complications hmm. we have seen are, uh, you know, less than 0.01% uh, uh, people coming in with uh, tremors and okay. uh, 
no other uh, issues. Liver function derangement, this virus mm. also behaves like a viral hepatitis kind of a virus, but even that is self-limiting. Most often than not, if you don't overuse medications and just assume a supportive role, okay. this kind of gets sorted out. The most important thing is mm -hmm. we have to remember patients either in home isolation or in wards or in ICU will have a lot of anxiety, stress, psychological issues, mm. and they may require a little yes. bit of comfort. And that, I think, is in excess of 70%. Counseling. Yeah. So that is... Uh, well, uh, uh, doctors... You, you have given us reason for uh, hope and reason for confidence, as you've heard here from three doctors on the panel, uh, that what we are seeing is a decline in active cases. Of course, there are regional variations. For instance, Delhi at this point in time is seeing a spike. So this is not the time to be complacent, but there is also something to be said about the development of natural immunity, which seems to be acting as a shield at this point in time. Be careful about the overuse of medication and, of course, uh, uh, do consult your doctors if you feel that there is a problem. But, uh, uh, you know, anxiety and panic is not the order of the day that is needed. Uh, Dr. Sandeep Budhiraja, Dr. Sandeep Devan and Dr. Mysore, thanks very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18 to take stock of uh, COVID-19 and what we make of it today. We'll take a break. There's a lot more coming up. Don't go anywhere. We're back in a moment.